You're watching Sekon Talks with Sekon Simbla. Thank you so much. I am well. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here right now. You I'm so me. happy to have you on here. <laughs> welcome. Oh, man. Welcome it's to been a long time, sis. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. It's been a really right. long time. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Say Come I appreciate you coming on here. I said, oh my gosh, Shakira, but I must call you by the name, darling. Hey. Kira Divine. Yes, you could call me Shakira, Kira Divine, you know. Look, but honey, the fans, darling, the fans in Australia and, and wherever they are, they know you for Kira Divine, the you fans. know? <laughs> yes. Speaking of tea, I see you got your tea mug ready. That's what right, you sipping girl. on? So what, so what does that say, smart? Because so you are a smart cookie. Australia and down under, honey. Yes. So tell me what else. Um, what are you sipping on? I always Favorite. like to start off with a little sip. Favorite. So this is just, is, I would like to call this the menage that is me, <laughs> Akira. Uh, this is my favorite tea that I found down under in Australia. And it's by Twinnings, actually. It's the company. We love Twinnings. Twinnings. We love okay. Twinnings. But this specific flavor, I've never seen anywhere else but Australia. And it's called Loganberry Strawberry Raspberry. Loganberry Strawberry it is raspberry sweet. girl okay i'm gonna have to so i'm gonna have good. to look that up i'm gonna have to figure that yes. one out i never even I buy, when i go to australia i go to kohl's all my aussies y'all know about kohl's i go to kohl's and i rack up on them because it's like two dollars and ten cents a box so it's cheap but it it's seems cheap. like it's amazing yes 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 overall i find produce like in the shopping you know going grocery shopping is pretty cheap in comparison to the u.s um, but yes, and also in the mix of the tea, I have some lemongrass and some Suriname cherry tea leaves, which is bush tea for all my peeps out there who know a little bit about bush tea. Come on, bush tea. But tell That's us about right. bush tea a little bit. Tell us a little so, bit. Bush tea, you know, I'm Guyanese. I have Guyanese ancestry. So people from the Caribbean and from African nations would be familiar with bush tea, which is taking leaves from your garden and boiling them over the stove and i mean you can have anything from ginger today i have lemongrass and surinam cherry tea leaves i see so i see use oh we know we definitely tea. know about putting whatever it is you need to put yes and boiling it and getting it going all right yes. bush tea especially in right. these covid times it's Lip good girl. to those those old Honey, these, remedies you these know? quarantine times we got to stay okay. fresh with the tea so this tea that i'm sipping on, what you sipping on I, got, I have a container here it's a yerba Ooh. mate tea it's by serengeti oh, wow, tea serengeti. okay do you ever remember that company they were across the street um from magic johnson but now they have a restaurant down like it's it's in harlem it's in harlem but it's okay. Af it's an African owned restaurant. This tea that I'm doing is a year, but my one twenty fifth with men. Okay. Well, it's yes. on it's one twenty fifth and I believe Madison or fifth or something okay. like that. They're about to move anyway, but you can order their stuff. I'm not sponsored. Not? I'm not sponsored. We're not sponsored. We just talking about no. the teas that we love. Yes, we are. The just to jump on into the interview, I want to just welcome you. I'm so appreciative Thank of you coming me. on to my Thank little you. show, Saycon Talk. Yes. Um, I really appreciate you coming on to sip a little tea with me. Tea is always good. We can always sip even in the summertime. So um, just to tell the audience a little bit, um, Shakira and I met when we were working together on a play, a, a musical, a wonderful show. Let's see if y'all can see. Called Bella, if you can see. Yes, Bella. You see that poster Bella. right there? Bella, oh, that's how we met. Bye. We were on this show called Fela, and we worked on the show together. We had the sexy, amazing costumes. Ooh, I guess they called it like some people called it like African big secrets. I heard yeah, people sexy is an understatement. Let me see if I can pop a picture in here. Marina Dragici, she did her thing. That um, let's see. Say that again. Marina, the costume designer from. She, yeah, family. she did her thing. Marina Drahi. How do you say her name? Drahi. I think Drahi. Yes, her last name. Marina. Yes. 
but she did her thing. She put her. I remember going to fittings, like the first few fittings, and just being just like finding the little thing. Your costume was bomb too. Let me Thank tell you, you, because you were a swing on the show. That's and I right. think she had got all her juices going, juices going. Ju By the time she started doing your costume, ah. she knew. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. always felt like all the the newer ladies had the best the best costumes. You know what uh, I mean? Like yeah. I felt like um, yeah, your costume, Onika's costume, yes. like y'all's costumes were lit. Like yes. you had the gold. <laughs> you know. Yes, you say, know what? I would say you are known for that kind of stuff. I want to share Thank this you. picture. Let me see. Thank you. I really did enjoy wearing it. And actually, little known fact, that was actually uh, the Sandra Isadora role off-Broadway costume, actually. Oh, she wore the gold? She did at one point. She wore wow. that. Wow. Oh, um, and then uh, it somehow Sparla Squaw, Squaw into, right? Right, when Sparla was doing the role. So somehow it became a swing costume by the time I came in the picture, I guess, because it was the next costume in numerical order. I got that one, but it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I got lucky. I really, I really loved my costume, honestly. Really, really. Enjoyed yeah, you it. had wonderful costumes. I would say you are always known for being fabulously dressed. As you see, I'm pulling up oh, a few pictures you. right here. <laughs> um, I may have my editor comb through this and throw in some other little stuff here and there, but um, yeah. you always known for all of your fabulous back. Where were costumes. We there? That you mentioned your heritage um, with your family um, yes. being from Guyana. Is that French Guyana or British? So yes, that's a good question. It's a former British Guyana. So, Guyana, uh, okay. Yes, well, back then that was how it was spelled and pronounced Guyana. And still to this day, Oh, you find the older people, and when you talk to actual people from Guyana, they don't say Guyana, say Guyana. Oh, they say Guyana. Oh, what is it? Guyana. 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 Yeah, it's like oh, wow. Like Guyana. No. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, but it was, it was a former British colony. Um, at one point, all three, when I say three, French Guyana, Dutch Guyana, which is Dutch, Austin, right? Yeah. The Sur Suriname. Yeah. Is, and then British Guiana. At all, at one point, all three were a Dutch colony, and you know, throughout the years, those three different powers fought over the land, and it. At the end, when I did the um like the Dutch Bob Marley country. show, the guy who was playing Bob Marley, he was from Suriname. His family was from Suriname, but he lived in uh, Amsterdam, and in, yeah. and I shot a movie in uh, Curacao, and there were a lot of people. Ooh. A lot of, in fact, the little Dutch. girl that played my daughter was Surinamese. She was from yes. Suriname, and she spoke all these languages. I was like, this little girl off the chain. Yeah, she was speaking Dutch. She was speaking Suriname. She was speaking English. She, I was like, yes. I was ahead, like, girl. okay. No, yes. that whole area, that part of the world, and the you know, I'm always talking and always interested in the African diaspora and how black people are everywhere, and we are speaking every language yes. and we are doing everything. Yeah. So speaking of everything, so yes, we met during Fela. But I'm sure you have been performing, dancing, singing all your life for that. How did you get, like, even get into the business and the entertainment business? Wow. I mean, I've been doing it since I could remember, to be honest with you. This is, I'm one of those people who just was, as a kid, just bouncing off the wall, singing, dancing, jumping. So my parents had to put me into something because I was just annoying them. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we got to give her something to do. <laughs> whining up all over the place. They were like, oh, we got to put her in some dance school. And luckily enough, the dance schools where I started in my neighborhood in Queens were run by women of the Caribbean diaspora. So I started out already doing Caribbean dance, Afro-Caribbean dance, and knowing the heritage and even Indo-Caribbean Indo dance and understanding the, the, the folklore of different Caribbean movement, not just my own culture, but other cultures that share similarities culturally. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I I got that training from a, from the very beginning of my dance training. That's I'm talking about age four. So yeah, my dad is a DJ and he used to be playing music in the house. And I used to be you come from a musical brothers. family. I it's sure a musical do. family. Both of my brothers are DJs. And my dad still he plays the guitar. He's just you know it, so it definitely comes with from the family and then. My mom definitely nurtured it. She, like, anything I wanted to do, she put me in. So the moment I showed some kind of vocal talent, she was like, all right, now you're going to be in the children's choir at church. And yes. the moment I started playing on the piano, okay, now five, I'm in piano lessons. 
So I took piano lessons from five to 15 years old for mm -hmm. a good for 10 years. And you kept so, going with it? My mom put me in piano at one point. And then I, I was like, I don't want to do it. And she's like, okay. And she took me out. I wish she had made me stay in piano. Can you still well, play? Yes, I can still play. But okay. my demise was something similar. When I got, I told you five to 15. So when I got 15, I was in high school. You're like, I, I want to do, I want to run around. I want to get my nails did. Oh, I and then your piano, tips. right. I wanted tips. And I was telling my mom, oh, you know, I'm just not feeling it anymore, which was a lie. But I really wanted to get my nails done, and I you can't have long nails and play piano. Wait, you stopped taking piano lessons so you could get tips. So stupid, I know. Oh, I really Lord. wanted tips. I wanted tips. <laughs> so then you kept going. You did piano lessons, all that stuff, and you eventually found yourself. Uh, Fela was was on Broadway. We did that show on Broadway together, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Did, huh? It was an amazing experience. It was it was such a huge show, and Fela Kuti was. Um, God bless him. He was the the innovator of Afrobeat music, a very popular yes. Nigerian uh, musician, social activist, everything. And so we had a chance to really, you know, one of the most exciting things that I appreciated about being on that show with you is that it was one of those shows where our whole cast, we had African-American, Caribbean, African, you know, we just Everybody had a nice was... mixture of black people from all over the diaspora. Everywhere. Yes. And boy, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, them girls, y'all would just be whining. You just a whine the whisk at the beginning of the show. Let me tell y'all, if y'all never seen it, nothing you know, like we it. have to insert a few little Fela clips right here so y'all uh, can just see a little bit of the vibe. Yeah. We're going to insert some Fela clips. Nothing I like mean, doing everything scattered, honey. That was just everything amazing. scattered. Let me tell you, <laughs> I, I lost so much weight on that show. I've always been proud oh. of being, you know, a thick, curvy girl. But just point. doing that show, I didn't even dance as much as all of you guys, but just okay. the dancing from the top, the little dancing mm -hmm. that I did, that whole time I was maintaining at about 15 pounds less than I am right now. That whole time I was doing that show. Yep. The only time I, I ever really like too. lost weight with a show. It was amazing. I was, yes. I was not mad at the, the I was not mad right? at, at so all. Not, like, so one of the things I tell people that I always, I, well, I was telling you this earlier today, I always tell people about you because uh -huh. I'm a very big fan of reinvention. Yes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of re reinvention and I search for evidence of that. Yes. And I specifically search for it in the people that I know, people mm -hmm. um, that I've worked with. Like I get extra pumped when I see people that I know doing something, even something different or just breaking out, you know? And so I can't remember how, maybe I saw something on your Instagram when I found out that you were the lead vocalist for this huge dance sensation called Panau. Am I saying, am I pronouncing it right? Yes, you are doing an absolute good job because most people have a problem or people Pinal. like P now Pinal. Pinal. let me it is Pinal. Very good. video i saw some video and it was you your image with <laughs> like paint and glow <laughs> in the dark and i was like is that shit? i was like what and then there were a couple of times where i would be out in the store and i would be like is that what? Uh, uh, you yes. know yes. and it's just really it made me so excited because a lot of us um i'm doing a series on my on my uh, my YouTube channel on Saycon Talks, I'm doing a series about how to transition um, from like singing and dancing to doing more acting, or from dancing to be to singing, or from you know if you want to transition into a different part of your life, a different you know um, make sure I'm plugged up. <laughs> if you want to transition to a different area in your career mm -hmm. or a whole different career, that it is possible that you can expand, you can have people get to know you in a different way, and a whole new audience will learn you and understand you in a different way. And you are proof of that. You know, I said, my friend is an international pop star, okay? Uh -huh. I've seen <laughs> images of you in concert with thousands of people. <laughs> like, how did you end up being, become oh, a part of Pinal? How did you, how did that happen? Oh, girl, that is such, a good question such a good question and if you believe it or not it's all thanks to fella and Kuti. i gotta just say that yes 
still to this day, I am getting gigs off of this gig. So long story short, we have a mutual friend. His name is Todd Simon. And I met him. He is a trumpet player. He's a music arranger, Grammy nominated. Dope. I met him when I was doing Chop and Quench. We had a show out here in L.A. And they hired local horn players here. Chop and Quench. So for y'all who don't know, Chop and Quench is like the post Fela musical band concert right series event if you didn't get a right. chance to see the fill out show at some point you might see chopping quench they come they come to cities they do private events yeah. and it's that same fill out vibe um right. you know a, a man playing and singing that good afro beat music and then the women dancing the full band musicians everything so you were part of chopping quench and at so the time, yes so that's like in the beginning days of chopping quench so we had a show at in here out here in LA for grand performances, which is a concert series, an outdoor concert series that they do here in LA every year in downtown LA. I'm interested to see, but they're probably going to stream live this summer, as most people are doing. Oh, nice! With everything that's going on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but we can't, check it out. They always have everybody's watching everything movie. online now. So. Yes, that's what it is now, and they always have an amazing lineup of artists. Like seriously, I'm not just saying that. But this was several years ago, so yeah, we um. We did the show here in LA and they hired local horn players. And one of the home horn players happened to be Todd Simon. So we just, you know, connected, like just talking casually. And I let him know, you know, I have a part, an apartment here in LA and I'm coming back. And we found out that we were actually neighbors. And I was like, oh, this, that's great. You live right down the block from me. He's like, yeah, you live down the block from me. So I told him I was coming back. He said, take my number, hit me up. So I did that. And he invited me to his show, his band called Ethio Cali. They're amazing. And um, it's a jazz fusion band. So it's a really cool fusion of like Afro Caribbean diasporic jazz. So music. is he in so Pinal really as well or? He's not, but he has worked with them. So he okay. reached out to me. So he band. introduced you. Yes. He said, hey, have you ever heard of Empire of the Sun? They're looking for background vocalists. And I thought of you. And I said, well, no, I never heard of Empire, but I looked him up. I'm, but I'm interested. Let me know. So Nick Littlemore, who's in Pinal, he's also in a band called Empire of the Sun with another singer named Luke Steele. So I actually started working on music with them first with two other vocalists um, and two other female vocalists. So I went into the session. It was great. And then a couple of days later, they hit me back up like, hey, can you come back in the studio? So I went back and, you know, I'm like, hey, where are the other girls? And they're like, oh, no, no, we just we just want you. And I'm like, okay. They're like, she just cut. And we, were we have cut, on we have cut the other girl. The other girl is finished, you It was, I don't, I don't even think it was like that. It just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being shady. I'm being shady. No, it's not. But the thing is, they were amazing vocalists, you know. But um, whatever it is in my voice, they heard something that they liked. So we just started working on music. And I started out as a session vocalist. And they put out Chameleon and it went platinum in Australia. Girl, that platinum. thing. I was on like, that song. That's a jam. That's a like, jam. Say con, I went into the entire experience so open minded, just open to the process. Even their recording process is so different. Nothing I, I've ever experienced before in my life. But I was just open to it, you know? And I was just like, oh, this is fun. This is different, you know? And we just clicked and made amazing music. So they, after the success of Chameleon, and the video, I had fun shooting it. They told me the idea and the concept. I'm like, I can so do that. Yeah, let's oh, do it. you so did it. You that know? video was amazing. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. the the images, the all of the, the Pinal stuff, it's just like, I'm going to try to bring in one of these images now. Let's see. Yes, shout yeah. out, major shout out to Ashley Joy Beck, who is the makeup artist who helps them bring those visions to life. Um, so she, is it he or she? It's she. Ashley Joy Beck. Ashley, Ashley, okay. Ashley, yes, yeah. Ashley okay, Joy okay. Beck. She's an amazing makeup artist. She actually um, works closely with Lily Singh, if anyone's familiar with her. Um, and she also is an actress in her own right as well. So she's an amazing individual. And she's just an, a, an amazing creative and artistic individual, you know? Like, she just has a great eye for the, the symmetry and the geometry of the makeup especially those kinds of things. Like, and you yeah. have to be very meticulous. The like album covers, you know, all of that stuff is so wild. Like, it's like, yeah. you know, it just puts you in a vibe, in a trance, you know? Yes. So be, because you had that opportunity to do that, you've been, you know, I'm leaving out the fact that you've been, you traveled the world um, 
uh, staging the shows for Lauren Hill, Jill yes. Scott as yes. well. We can't leave that out. We can't Actually, we um, to Ghana. I was so Hi. blessed to go to Ghana with you. Yes, girl, um, we, we were singing. Africa. Yes, we were singing yeah. with um with with Miss Lauren Hill. Correct. Um, the the divine Miss Lauren Hill. We had a wonderful time in Africa together. Like, you know, I sure did. You you you've been mm -hmm. really a person who has touched a lot of people. I say because you also are a dance teacher as well. You yes. teach. You do choreography. Yes. You guys, anybody who's on YouTube, basically just get into this YouTube vibe and Google Kira Divine. Google, and what, what's your other name that will come up too? Uh, Kira Divine or Afro Soka or Soka Sirens. Afro Soka, yes. yes. And what's the other one, Soka? Soka Sirens, yes. Yeah. So Google Thank that you. and all these little dance, little hot, sexy dance videos. Uh -huh choreography videos if you just enjoy uh, you. so this is my thing i think um one of the other things that i really admire and is really important to me as a little brown girl growing up i was always looking for my chocolate beautiful yes. heroes and sheroes right too. so miss lauren hill was one of them me too um, you know what one. i mean I and still can, we I have still to promote myself, like. say, say that again I still pinch myself like oh just that you had wow. a chance to work with her like yes she's just so amazing and we need those examples so like when you get to see a woman a young woman like you who's doing choreography who's teaching dance who's singing who's traveling the world you know it's just a really great example to say I can do it too you yes. know what I mean like you you yes. have to we have to really always present and uplift each other. That's one of the things I do with my Instagram page is like, yes. so I post, I don't post as much on my feed, but in my stories, I'm always like, oh, that's dope. And then yes. I put things in my story that I think are interesting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, so when I saw that you had released a new, uh, a new song, a new video, I was like, what the, what, wait, hold up. Cause we had already discussed. I was like, oh, come be on yes. my show, be on my show. Yeah, I already asked and then you, I was yes. like, wait, you dropped the new single? I forgot to mention that to you, girl. Yes, I was like, like, uh, like oh, we need to do your ugly. thing like sooner than later. We got to promote yes. this single. Yes, girl. We promote do. the single. Show me your reason. Make me believe ya. Cause this is my season. Yeah. So, yes. yes. How did you, from being a choreographer, yes. Pop, dance, pop, music star, yes. Soka, siren, wind it up, goddess. <laughs> <laughs> and now you said, and then you were like, let me go on and drop this single on y'all real quick. Real I, quick. <laughs> I grew up in Georgia, so I, I get a little country. But tell That's us okay. about your single. The imagery oh. is so beautiful. Oh, so so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, sister. Like, for real, from the beginning, since I've met you, you've been nothing but supportive and uplifting. Yeah, this is real. This ain't fake. This is real. It's not okay. fake. It's not <laughs> fake. I get excited. I I'm telling you, I have to I see. Really this thing, I have to see my people winning because that's what yes. keeps going. If I see love. people like I think some people they like seeing people not doing well. I'll be like, uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. I can't be around if they're not. A, uh. I want to. I want to see success. Yes, I want to witness success. Yes, and specifically for my black people, I just want to see right. us doing well. So tell me about your single. Yes. How did your single yes. come? Out? So I, for the last ten years, actually, I've been writing music seriously, more like ten to twelve years, um, especially in the soca realm. It's some a, a dream that has been something I've been trying to realize for a very long time. But because dance was always at the forefront of my career. Right, I, you used to do choreography it. for a big soca exactly. star. What's her name? Right, um, Alison Hines. Alison yes. Hines, yes, you used to correct. do choreography for her. and She's huge correct. in the soca world. Correct, correct. And even working with, when I was working with her, I've been blessed in my career to really work with, an ama with amazing female vocalists, like ones that I actually I admire and respect outside of the fact that I even get to work with them, you know, what a blessing. And she's one of them. So I remember even one time I was in Barbados and she let me come into a session with her and sing a little bit. And you know, I always, yes. it's, it's a, it was a huge fear and love that I had to conquer because I have been writing for so long and I just never felt like my stuff was enough. But even when the quarantine happened, I mean, I had already planned on putting this song out because as you know, it takes a lot to put out a song. This is not, yeah. not something that yeah. happens overnight. So this mm -hmm. has been coming since 2019. 
but I've had a few setbacks along the way, which is okay because it was a huge. You have to push, curve. push through. Yes, and you wouldn't understand this. If someone oh yeah. Put out their own music, you would understand that you get setbacks and things that you don't foresee that happen along the journey. Mm -hmm. But it was important that I follow through and really just get over that hurdle. And I'm happy I did. Um, and I have a lot more where that came from, and I'm really excited to share because I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. But um, in my writing journey, musically, up to you know working with Pinal, I'm now I'm turning out these platinum hits. And yes, it's it's dance music, it's electronic dance music, but it's still dance music. And dance yes, music is the type of music that I write. You said platinum. You know? Is that the platinum hit dance? Hey, hey, hey! Got a couple of them in my belt. I can't see what's going on down there. The platinum hit. Right, a few ARIA award nominations, you know, opening up. Yes, I have no idea. Yeah, tell me about your nominations. Oh, I'm sleeping. So, yeah, so tell me, the tell first me. song that I put out with Pinal, which was Chameleon, it went platinum and it got nominated for three. So, you awards wrote the on ARIA. the song as well. Yes, well, yes. yes. Oh, I yes. must salute yes. you. I must add songwriter then to your title. Thank you. So, thank, look thank you. you. Okay, thank you. And, um, so they actually put out an album after Chameleon, um, and out of the ten tracks, I did seven. I worked on seven of them. Girl, yes, and I they put out two seven more tracks. Singles. Going. I hope you're getting a coin. <laughs> hope they're taking care of you, girl. Okay, and um, <laughs> no, but um, so yeah, I got I the most recent song I worked on with them last year called Solid Gold. Uh, I worked on another. Oh, I love the imagery for that one too. Yes, Marquis Tolliver. I um, love it. So it's a great song. I got to collaborate with another artist outside of Pinal, which is made up of Nick Littlemore, Peter Mays, and Sam Littlemore. Um, initially, when I first started working with them, it was just Nick and Peter. And then Sam was brought into the fold, who is also Nick's brother. Well, shout um, out so to Nick, to Peter, and Sam. Yes, but a lot of the early sessions, it was just Nick, Peter, and I. In the studio working on our music pumping it out but yeah so how did y'all uh, end up in australia is it because it just the songs just took off from from the pre the first song everything just right. took off so pinal is actually a already legendary electronic dance music act in australia way wow. before they even met me so they are from australia they're from sydney I and see. Norton, you are part of the rebirth, like a new generation. Correct. Like they were coming oh. back and, and they were trying to, you know, work on some new material. And I started working with them around that time. So I it, see. it worked out. That's really oh. Kira divine. That's very divine. Right? You know what I mean? The like first song that I worked oh, on with wow. them. Yeah, platinum. It, so know, when did the band they, first come out? I feel I feel bad. I, I'm not familiar no, no, with okay. the original okay. Pinal. Yes, so discography. I'm gonna have to. The late '90s, like '99, 2000. That's that's okay. When I mean, and that during that time is a time where a lot of the those dance music was when it was really starting to like explode in the world, in America, wherever, yep. Europe, Africa, Asia, yep. Australia, Antarctica, everywhere was yep. like starting to explode. So they were one of those yep. early bands, and then you were, were part of the rebirth, so to speak. Correct. Right before they worked, the last project they did, the project that they did before they worked with me was Pinal versus Elton John. So it was an wow. album. With Elton wow. John. Yes, girl. Okay. Yes. okay. Like, wait, what? <laughs> so when you but perform with them, again. do so when you perform with them, do you do some of the old songs yes. too? Because yes, it's a I full do. show. It's a show. I do. Correct. So I get to perform some of their older older songs that I was not honestly very familiar with. Right. But they love these songs in Australia because they- I know how it is like, oh, like that's one right. of the most yes. universal things ever. When, when somebody's song comes on, mm. you know what I mean? For me, it's um like one of my songs is um back to life, back to reality. When that beat comes on, I'll be like- Yes. E -E -E yes. You know, like, Oh, There's always God, that jam yeah. that comes on. So I'm sure Pinal had those yeah. jams. And so you were like, you were able to just get inserted into an amazing, amazing show. Amazing show, paradigm, world. Like they have their own just aesthetic and vision. And it's very distinct. And I it's very distinct, you know, yes. kind of as an artist fell in and just kind of played my position 
really so how are me. your songs like your new single how how is it different from yes. out, like how is yes what makes your new song your your music this new Kira Divine music what makes it different yeah so to me it is still dance music but what makes it different is that now you're getting to hear me who I am this is my cultural influence. This is Afro Soka. This is my Guyanese influence. You're hearing, you don't even realize half of the Guyanese isms that you hear in the song because I'm making you, I'm making you become familiar with my people, our, what we talk about, what we say, our sound. Yeah. The producer is a Guyanese producer. And this is something that I've been working towards for years because I made it my mission. I want to work with a Guyanese producer. And I made my, you know, I went through the journey of trying to work with different producers and I finally found this producer, Joey Too Cool. Shout out to Joel Brown, Joey Too Cool out of Georgetown, Guyana. Um, I found him on YouTube. And I'm hmm. like, oh my God, he's in Guyana? He's Guyanese? And I reached out to him and the rest is history. We started working a couple years back, uh, about three, four years ago. We started working on, about four four years ago, we started working on music. And, and slowly um, but surely it, it came to life. Look at this. Yes, it's so beautiful. it really did. Thank you. Beautiful. And then even, um, I wanted to say, even working with him um, and producing that, I he, he can tell you specifically that I'm like, I really want to create a sound that we've not heard before. I don't want to really sound like anyone else. Like, yeah. it's important to me that we take this opportunity. And for you to represent a new generation of your culture as well. Yes. You no, know, yes. I think it's That's very important to, important to yes. represent. I think sometimes people think, I know, because I'm always like, oh, they Liberian. Like this tea company, this man that started uh -huh. this man that started this company is a Liberian uh -huh. guy that started this company. Even though the Serengeti is not in Liberia, but hey, you it's know okay. you gotta have your name oh for the God. people to draw the people, draw the people. But right. like, I'm I'm all about like representing ATL. I'm from Atlanta. Like representing where you come from yes. and bringing that to your music, bringing it. Yes. that's the thing that makes it authentic. You know, yes. so the more people. Um, can know you, understand you, know a little bit about what makes you tick, um, you know, learn a little bit about what inspired you. Mm -hmm. And the more you fuse it into your music, fuse it into your lifestyle, whatever, your, your social media. Let me share yes. your social media again. You are, make sure everybody needs to follow you, right? Please, on, yes, uh, please. Follow me at Kira Divine. Kira Instagram. Divine. K-I-R-A Divine. D -I -R -A. Yes, and if you guys are enjoying this video, and enjoying this wonderful interview, make sure you thumbs up the video and subscribe. Yes, you guys and subscribe to, what is your um, YouTube page as well? Kira Divine as well. K-I-R-A-D-I-V-I-N-E. Come on so through. Kira Divine across all platforms. All platforms for the most part. Yes, you can find me. And my YouTube is about to be really on a pop and because I have been vlogging my entire experience traveling all over. Australia. Have you edited the stuff up or you got to kind of yes, chop I'm it all up? Vlogs. I'm so all the canals, canal yes. tour, backstage, yes. all over the world, all airplanes, planes, and automobiles. From Lauren Hill, some Jill Scott. I went back on. to the this year. I choreographed her tour, her 20th anniversary tour. That's so that the thing cool. that stuck out actually was the Jill Scott. I was Yes. Um, so when her. Erica Badu, Erica Badu and Jill Scott did their verses. their verses, yes. I was honey, there. I was in love. I was in the kitchen Front making movies. I had my no. iPad playing. I had the the phone. I was recording the verses. Movies. I didn't know I needed. It was I didn't right? know I needed it. It was, it was, was such so a healing good. for everybody. I think because we were all so intense. I actually did a live. You can go back. I'm gonna mark put that in the um, bottom bar. Yes. I did a live where I was just talking about how amazing that versus was. But then I'm fishing around. I was screen recording, reposting. You know how you do your social media thing. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to your, Inst your Facebook. I don't know, you probably posted it on both, but I saw it on Facebook where you were talking about when uh, when Jill Scott came to see Fela. Yes. And I remember when she came to see Fela, she held court on stage. We all talked to her for sure a long time. But she keyed it. into you. <laughs> she keyed into you. And I remember, and you talked about this yes. on your Facebook. Yes. What did she say to you? What did Jill Scott? It was a beautiful. It was a beautiful moment and a moment that I really hold near and dear. And that versus really conjured up those feelings again because you know it was about ten years ago, so it's like a while ago now, you know. But Girl, it, it felt like it was like three back. years ago. I'm so out of touch with it time. It feels like it was three. Like Fela feels right? like it was five years Yesterday. ago. Today, like everything Girl. feels like 
like Lauren Hill when we went to um when we went God, to Africa, that feels it like feels like that was like that was 2014 girl oh my god that was six years ago it was a while ago now right isn't that crazy oh my god time flies uh, I know. So yeah. So what did Jill Scott so, say to you? I was. Um. She came when I came down. Cause um, everybody was kind of crowding there already. But I came down and she was like, "You like she singled me out." And I was like, "Who you like me? <laughs> what do you mean? Who do you? What do you like? Yeah, you. You had, the, you had on the yellow, right? I'm like, cause you. Had, I'm telling you, cause yeah, you had that right? costume, girl. And then it was right. something on your back, and you'd be yeah, like, she's like, and you had the blue dots on your back. I said, yeah. She's yeah, like, so you'd girl, be like, y'all gonna get into these dots? She was like, I was I looking, looking for you. I was looking all over for you. I was looking for you. I'm like, really? She's like, yes, girl, you are my favorite. I said, oh. what? What? She's like, yes. So, but then you ended up working with her. Yes, because we just kind of. We exchanged email. We exchanged email, and I just sent her an email the next day, like, "Hey, girl, it was so nice meeting you last night. Let me know if you want some private lessons, whatever you need. Holla!" And I never heard anything back until about three months later. I got an email saying, "Hey, girl, I'm going on tour. I need you." And I'm like, "Oh my God, I would." You said love she was girl. like, "I'm going on tour. I need you." Yes. Go, let's, she was I, like, "Let's get it." I need some shake and shimmy girls. That's what she said. That's right, honey. So but, how um, many girls? So she, you kind of helped her put the girls together. I helped her put it together, obviously, because we were we were doing fell on Broadway and we're on contract. So I can't leave my job to go do it as much as I would have loved to do it. But as the fates would have it, one of the girls I used, I used Lashana Holloway and Daisha Graff. Daisha Graff is the sister of Alicia Graff Mack, who is the like a the, one of the prima ballerinas from Ailey, and she's now the director of Juilliard's dance department. Yeah, <laughs> she's a major honey. She's a yeah. major dancer. So Alicia was getting married, and Daisha, her little sister, is one of the dancers that I use. I literally called up Lashana like, "Girl, I need you, and I need Daisha. I need because they matched. I knew they looked good, and they're kind of my height and my size. Right, 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 right." right. She wanted to shake and the shimmy. I'm like, they can shake and they can shimmy. I can make them do what they need to do. I, so, I'm always, I've always loved like from watching a Tina Turner show and seeing all the girls, even Prince at one time had two twins swirling around him. Yes. God bless him. You know what I mean? So I wish if, if you have any clips of, um, if you have any clips of the stuff that you did with, with, uh, Jill Scott. Oh yeah. Share. I want to sh show a little bit of this Lauren Hill, just jumping, look, jumping from, Two of the most iconic divas ever, Jill Scott <laughs> and Lauren Hill. I want to share a tiny little piece of this Lauren Hill um, from when we went to Ghana. It's a tiny Whoa. little piece. The sound is not on, but it's just like a little, a little piece of the video. Let's see. That was a beautiful time. Can you see it? Yeah, there we go. Yes, I skipped to a little area so you can see. I think we'll come up. I mean, oh my I will never forget. She had on those boots. Uh-huh. She looks so good. Remember they made that skirt for her? Yes. And there we are. Yeah, look at us. Uh -huh. Look at us getting ready. We were getting ready. Ah, ah, oh, ah. my God. Take on. I remember we were about to go on stage, and the DJ was playing Out of Africa, this song a couple of the cast members sang for Steve yes. and Molly. And I was like, Take on, do you hear that? And I was like, you know what? This is meant to be. You were like telling me and telling Candace. You were like, that's her song. She's on the song. I'm like, yeah. But I'm just so grateful that you were there to have this experience with me. It was a very unique experience, and we held it, it down. We held it, it was. down in Africa, Girl, oh my and God, look, all the way in Ghana, ah. all the way in Ghana. We tried to enjoy as much as we could. You remember what's the guy on the keys? He went and got a giraffe when we were trying to leave. He was somewhere. We went to the market. Oh, oh Gerald. It's, it's so random. Jeez. But we were in the market. Jeez. We were shopping, getting things. And we were trying for us to leave, and we could not find him for nothing. And he came Girl. running out the thing. He had a big old giraffe. And somehow he wrapped it and shipped it and took it yes. back. I don't know how he got that thing through customs. It was like yes. a giraffe, like a, a six foot carved African giraffe. Yes. He was like, Oh, I'm bringing this thing from, from Ghana. Yes. Oh, I, got, I have this one dress that I got there that every time I wear it, I just feel like the magic is cascading. The Ghanaian yeah. African magic is just cascading, you know? Girl, no, that was a I, wonderful experience. And I only had that experience because of you. Like, really, uh, at the time, I was in rehearsals for the Bob Marley play. Yes, you were. And I remember, I remember that um, you hit me up. You were like, girl, you were like, you want to um, you wanna sing with Lauren Hill? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, when? And you and you were like, Sunday. I was like, OK, where? You were like, Africa. I was like, wait, whoa. <laughs> 
was like, Africa on Sunday? I was like, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Africa but, on Sunday, girl. We honey. <laughs> but I remember we just, and then we actually had rehearsals in the same place that I was having the Marley rehearsal. rehearsal. So yep. I would be a Marley rehearsal all day, get out at six o'clock and then come and meet y'all. Yep. And Miss Hill is like remixing everything. So not, so I took it for granted. I was like, I know that album, but you know, she's remixed everything. So uh-huh. I was like, oh, that ain't how, that ain't how it went when I was learning it back in yeah. the day. Let me, let me get my vocals together. So I, it was just, it ended up being such a blessing. It was a wild it was, trip. It was a short trip. trip, but it was, it ended up being such well, a blessing to me. We did so much in a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, we really did. Of going we went to the, the Gold Castle. Coast. We the went ca- to the Gold yes. Coast, the beach. We did a lot. You remember yeah. they had that dinner for us? Yeah, um, beautiful dinner the last night. Yes, to this the day I still keep so in touch good. with one of the those the expats that all they moved back. Let me ask yes. you. Let me ask you a sort of a pop culture question right now. Okay. A lot of people right now we cannot leave out the fact that right now is the time of Black Lives Matter. Yes, a lot of people have been protesting. There's been an uprising in spirit and everything. There's been this uprising amongst Americans amongst African-Americans amongst black people all over the world. Yes. And there's been a small group of people who are sort of like suggesting, uh, hey, you guys, I think we should move back to Africa. Mm-hmm. And you, I'm gonna tell you, even after we did Fela, I remember you continue to travel to Nigeria. You were out visiting, doing your little trips. Don't nobody want to bump your spot, but you out there doing, <laughs> having your trips. <laughs> your trips to Nigeria. Um, <laughs> do you, what, how do you feel about the idea of moving to the motherland for, for black people to, to return? What are your thoughts on that? Oh man, uh, that's, uh, that, thank you for asking me. Cause it's such a good question. It just makes me feel so good. Even thinking about my answer. I I'm think a- I was on the train before Marcus Garvey was talking about the black star line. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Listen. Come on, Garvey. I, I, come on, Garvey. I, I'm on the Black Star Line back to Africa, honey, because I've been on it before it was a yes. Trend, okay? Yes. You just said it. I was going there and I saw it for myself. Saikon, I mean, I know you're Liberian. Being Guyanese, it's a piece. It's it's partially, we are African, but we're Afro Caribbean. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So it's like we're still one stone's throw away from Africa, even though a lot of the culture was main, retained and maintained. maintained you yes, know. the Guyanese y'all have a lot that y'all have maintained from yes, you you I sipping do. your bush tea right now. You I know, sure so, am. absolutely, I sure am. <laughs> so would you? Yeah, so amazing. what are your thoughts about moving to? I think it's amazing. I was on it before it was a thing, and I'm just so grateful everyone is finally catching up and trying to get on the damn boat. And seeing how cool it is, right? It's so cool. I mean, I went back to the, I could I could live in Nigeria. I could live in Ghana. I have plans on living in Africa. I won't give out my details right now. But I have future plans. Yeah, keep your yeah, keep yourself. Your stuff. And as you're working on it, yes, I'm sure I'll you will be. That the world you will just be surprised. Over. And yes, I'll come over. You can come over for a party. Because you had posted the other day, and girl, I remember them parties in Lagos when we were there. <sighs> Let me and tell you. This is circa 2011. Okay, just to throw it out there, so you guys know, this was a while ago. You see these faces that we're making right now. I don't think I've ever heard music that good. Like, you remember the guy was on the, it was like, I was like, this is the original house music. Like, yes. in your soul. Like, Woo. we were jumping in the pool in our cocktail dresses. Do you remember? <laughs> we were like, ah! like there was a pool inside the club and we were like jumping in the pool. <laughs> the spirits just jump. You the can't pool. help yourself. I mean, it literally single-handedly changed my life. Just the, the feeling of stepping off the plane, the, just the, when I smelled the air, my spirit, how I felt just standing on the ground. I've never I felt always so say that. I say life. that the time that I spent in Africa, I swear, I always say, it's like the air is sweeter. I don't it know if is. it's like, you know, because of our DNA, your lungs are like, Ah, like you find yourself. I mean, we sound so mystical and magical, and I don't want to <laughs> overly romanticize it. I mean, I'm sure people are like, oh, they think Africa is so special, but we do because it we appreciate special. the beauty of it. 
And I swear, I feel the same way. Like my air, when I breathe, my lungs feel so good. When I land, yes. when you get off the plane, it's a it's a hot stickiness that you're just mm. like. You come alive. You know, yes, you come alive. Billboards with nothing but African beautiful women in Gale on every billboard. Like, yes. Oh, we, and how special that us. is to see images of yourself everywhere. That's yes. very special. So speaking of imagery, the imagery that you had in your music video, you, it's you, it's other women dancing with you. Yes. The sunflower. Yes. You had your fan. Honey, I saw, I yes. was watching her. You had your fan. I was like, I was like, is that Osho? Like, what is happening with the yes. Get into the, tell us about these vibes. These, these yes. vibes. And so, did you do the choreography? Ooh, good. These are two good questions. So, you know, I, as I told you before, the producer, Joey Too Cool, I've, I've been working with him for several years. So this is like the third track that I've worked on with him that I, I was like, oh, I love this song. This is, a, this is the type of song that I would actually want to release because I've been working on music for years, but it's just unreleased. I have it all on my laptop. It's just a whole bunch of unreleased tracks. So I was like, if I'm going to release a song, this is the type of song that I would release. You know, and I have these influences from like the Lauren Hills and the Jill Scotts and the Allison Hines, these powerful women who have come before me and have made their own lanes in music in their own way, in their own right. So that was always an angle I wanted to come from. So after, as, a, as a song came to me and really I was just reflecting on- I always think about Grace Jones too, because of your long yes. limbs and stuff, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry, as the song no, came it's to okay. me. The inspiration for the song was really reflective of how I was feeling at the time, which was last year when I started writing it, last April. And just like the struggle that I know I've experienced not to say my journey hasn't been blessed because as you have heard my resume and the things I've done, I've done some amazing things in my life, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the struggles that I endured because of the way I look. It's it, it, just because I make it look easy doesn't mean it was easy by any means, by any means. There are trials and tribulations that we all go through, but I would be remiss not to mention and acknowledge the extra hurdles I may I know I've had in many instances because of how I look. But for me, it was always, okay, you might judge me on how I look, but I'm gonna make you regret ever judging me, okay? And that is a lot of where that inspiration for the That's song literally is. how I live. I live my life with that same motto, like and literally. So, yes. Like, ain't nobody gonna say nothing about this chocolate. Ain't nobody okay. gonna say nothing about it. It took me a long if time If you're not to into here. it, next. There's I'm plenty here. of people that are. Yes. It took me a long time to get here. I, 10, 15 years ago, I don't know if I could speak the same way with the same conviction and complete conviction. But mm. so Oshun, the story of Oshun really um, stuck to me because I felt there was a parallel in that messaging about, you know, her story when they took her for granted and she's like, you know what, all right, I'm going to leave. I'm going I'm to be out. See how long you're going to last without me, you know? And so to answer your question, I choreographed the video and it was important to me to also include Oshun movement. So for people who know about the Yoruba religion and uh, belief system, who those who are aware of her would would be knocked over the head with symbolism because they know her of her. Yeah, I was like, think, and think, know her think, story. Think, think. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You know, and, and I love that because that's what the beauty of being an artist is. You can send many messages through many different mediums. And I just love being able to have, be, have that creative opportunity in life. You know, it's, it's definitely a, an opportunity and I, I don't take it for granted that I'm able to express myself creatively, you know, through dance, through music and through the vision. So I wrote the treatment for the video. I, you know, scoured the internet for imagery of Oshun because I wanted to represent her in her entirety, you know, and really, really it's, she's a goddess that, found me. I didn't find her. She found me. Mm. But um, I, I wanted to also just honor her and reflect on on her influence in my life. You know, and I'm I wore just sharing yellow. pictures as you're talking was, about it. I'm I'm yeah, sharing these beautiful images. Yeah, you know, I had the gold straps, you know, so it's a paying homage to her role in my life. And I love flowers. I just, I did a talk. Um, I did a talk uh about two weeks ago and i called it i said women are flowers women are bounty yeah and it was a very i have a very specific viewpoint um uh, because there's a lot of people that um feel as though 
you know, there's no difference. We, you know, first of all, let me say, I respect everyone who is, everybody's, there's sort of a thing where people want to kind of wash away um, femininity and masculinity. People want to have sort of a non-binary space, but I am very appreciative of the masculine space and the feminine space as well. And I, I, I had this talk where I was just mentioning, I said, women are flowers. And a lot of times we don't appreciate how much joy and beauty flowers bring to our life, you know? And you, some people might think that flowers, like I've heard people say they don't even want flowers as a gift because they're like, oh, they're not going to last next week or, oh, it's, oh you know, it's that. only going to last two weeks or whatever. But like for those two weeks, every time, like even before we started this interview, I was like, oh, let me yes. bring this plant from my kitchen. You know, <laughs> you know, everything that you have, every plant, every piece of greenery, every fruit, you know, it, it can really give you energy and inspiration. So something about the sunflowers, when I saw them on the imagery, it was just yeah. so beautiful. Let me add it again. It was so beautiful to me. Um, this yeah. image of you with these sunflowers, it's a really beautiful photo. Who's the photographer again? I know you told me, but I, so, um, that is a photographer based in Fort Myers, actually Southwest Florida. His name is Abe Adonowo. He's Nigerian. All right. Abe Adenowo. Adenowo. <laughs> Hope I didn't you better say all the names, okay? Abe Adenowo. And Abe Adenowo. Adenowo. <laughs> Adenowo. Yes, he's a All the Nigerian friend. fellas, we, we, we know how right. to get into it if y'all, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that brings me to, wait, wait. So, so you had this wonderful Nigerian photographer. I'm sure with everything that you do, all your fabulousness, all your wonderful costumes, all the feminine, flowery, honey dipped ways. I'm sure yeah. that there must be some brother somewhere beating down your door. Like, um, are you, are you willing to speak a little bit on the love life? Oh, she wants the, the good bush Tina. <laughs> <laughs> the good bush Tia. Oh, what is, you know, I mean, well, I mean. I will, I'll say this, you know, there's always a Shango or two, you know, busting the lightning, you know? Hey! I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <sighs> no, you know, I am single. I've been really focused, you know, um, but- It's hard know. being, like doing all this amazingness. Yeah. It takes a really focused and confident it man. It does. A confident and focused man who wants to um, treat you, water you like the flower that you are. Ooh, yes, so I totally get it. To oh, I've been, honey, I've been studying this thing. Like I'm understanding now, like yes. it really takes a very particular type of guy. Are you, would you date any type of guy? Do you have a type? Do you have a <laughs> bush I, listen, I, so I've been really focused on accomplishing a few goals of mine you know i have a couple of more goals i need to accomplish and you know because i'm here in la and there's a few other lanes that i need to get into before i do out of here so and, uh, and getting a relationship doesn't mean that you would necessarily stop with your doing you no 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 never that's never been me and i will be quick to move on because we come into Especially this if world, somebody was trying to shut you down and yes, have no you. that's not me right i, I tried that i don't shrink for anyone I'm a long legged, beautiful, tall flower, sunflower. You like somebody needs to appreciate this sunflower. <laughs> say, say that again. Make me wilt. I don't need anyone who's going to make me wilt. I need somebody who's going to water me, you know, and help me turn to the sun so I can get my vitamin D. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing about okay. um, sunflowers. They're so cute. Like, they're so they like human. Like, if there's not enough water, they go, Doo. And then you put the water and in the and then they go, like sunflowers they're are so amazing. They're active. They're like human yes. almost. And I love yes. that about sunflowers. Yes. So they're very, you know, I really identify with their movement, how they move. So you would need the type of man who's who's willing and able to water your flower. Water me, baby. Water me. With any type, like any, um, do you have a cultural type? Are you, well, you, you know, all to be the... honest, you know, I, I, I don't think I, I don't discriminate. However, you know, I really am proud of who I am and my ancestry, and I would love for my future children, if we're talking about potential long-term mate, because that's the only thing I'm settling for. I, I mean, and that's not a settle. That's yes, the only yes. thing I'm even open to at this yes. point in my life, or else you're just wasting my time because I got things to do. But um, 
yeah, I want them to have a strong cultural background. I want them to be able to identify with who they are and where they come from. So, you know, I would love me a good African Caribbean man. I don't want to be too, you know. No, I feel you. I feel you. I feel it's I like, leave a little open. Yes, it's like life presents itself how it presents itself. But you know what you you know what flavor yeah. you like. You know what flavor you're yeah. attracted to. What you can enjoy. <laughs> so the song is called "My Season." Yes, by Kira Divine. That's right. My season. Yes, this is our season. You know, yes. let's let's relish in it. I really wanted. When I shot this last year, I shot it last summer actually. I really wanted to represent what I don't. Girl, you see. better had you better had had a video in your pocket. You were like, "Oh, we on quarantine uh -huh. video." <laughs> you better pull that video. Oh, last, last summer, August blackout. Yeah, you better pull that video out. Okay, for the people who think I'm just come like jumping on trends, like no, this was a long honey thing baby. Maybe an independent artist, you would understand that this takes absolutely take time. Timing time okay. is everything. Yeah, so uh, it was important to me to send a message, many messages, as you know, through movement, I'm, I'm doing many things, but one of the messages I really wanted to show is how I've always in my career made it my business to uplift black women, especially, and it's no offense to all the women of the world, but especially women like me, because I know what it is to be discriminated against because of how I look. Yep. You know, and I wanted to. And there show are people who will deny that that happens, but it's a real they thing. They will. They yeah. will, and they'll they'll make you seem like you. But I already know. I have my own personal experience. You cannot tell me that this is not the case because I have this, 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 and this, and this mm -hmm. that has happened to me in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you, how many sisters can I speak to who have parallel experiences? Come on, we're not we're not making this stuff up. However, we're not crazy, no. We're not crazy, but I wanted to take this as an opportunity to uplift. And show the beauty, and see, the, and and show the sisterhood in in visual form. Like show the beauty of us in our natural habitat. What That's why I loved all the girls in the video. The, yes. the habitat, like you say, the earthy habitat we around. Are. Yes, the greenery. We are. Yes. yes. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> show you what we working with. A yes. Bit. Mm. Oh. Well, I'm so, so proud of yes. you. I'm Thank so you. proud of you, and I appreciate you so much Thank for coming you. on to Saquon Talks yes, with girl. me, so like having a little sip talks. of tea. Yeah. I think it is so important. First of all, I always start all of my podcasts off with what I'm sipping on or what yeah. I'm doing that's in the form of wellness, because what I've seen is there's a big habit of everything. Everybody's always shouting out what alcohol they on or whatever, <laughs> and I'm always like, well, what herbs you sipping on? What, okay. what are you doing for your... What are you doing for your body? What are you doing for yeah. your calmness, for your sense of, you know what I mean? And so I always want to emphasize self-care, that sense of chill. You, I remember when I was dealing with, um, I had like a little bit of a, an injury. And so I was getting ready to do Motown. Do you remember I came and took a couple of your classes? Yeah, so you just like, take my class. I wanted to mention that earlier. That you yeah, I was like, I was like, I got to get my body yeah. moving again. I'm about to be yeah. on Broadway again. And I came yeah. and I took some of your classes and bless yes, your heart, you so patient with me. Oh, um, yes. You know, like, oh, I just, I feel like we have to approach life um, with a sense where we don't hang on to worrying about age so much. Like, I feel like we are ageless, honey. Like, we just, like, you know what I mean? Like, we just yes. live in a, in a time and an age where you can be whatever you want to be. You can you when? can present yourself however you want to present yourself. Correct. But you have to take care of yourself. Correct. So you have to stretch. You have to have your herbs. You have yes. to do what you need to do to keep, you know, cleanse yourself, drink your water. You know, you have to do those things in order to Correct. be successful. It's not going to be just, you know, a lot of, like I've noticed a lot of um, YouTubers are doing videos on just feminine wellness and just taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things that the grandmothers would, would tell us, you know, yeah. about how to just how to take care of yourself. And we have to bring all of that back. Bringing back the natural, herbal, whatever it is, and combining it with the new intergalactic online so Afrofuturism, that's the that's yes. the future of the world, you know? And I think yes. you represent that. You really, like literally, you really literally represent like sort of Afrofuturism, naturalism. You know what I'm saying? It's yes. like you you like hitting it right on the head, girl. Yeah, like, no, this is why I'm a fan, because that's Yes, that's the stuff that I like. That's the stuff yeah. that I like. So, 
So it makes me a fan. I'm like, oh, I'm into that. I'm into that. And there's a large group of um, women. There's a large group of people who are into that aesthetic, which is why Black Panther was so huge because people were hungry for it and looking for it on so many different levels. So you are just really embodying that. And I wish you all the success in the world. And oh, I just appreciate goodness. you for blessing my podcast, uh, my YouTube you channel, me. everything. Oh, when you thank you for having me. When you reached out to me, I'm like, are you serious? Girl, yes, you I know. Honored. Be great. And I'm Say telling you, I'm before I even knew you had a single coming out. I know. And then I was like, you got a single. Ago. I was like, well, we going to have imagery. So, we I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really promote it prior to. I was just kind of like, you know. But you know, I understand really that funny. too. I understand too yeah. because you know, like a baby or something. You have to like, like a baby or a plant, like a seedling, you have to let it take root and know, okay, I'm on my yeah. way to doing this. Cause it's hard to mention stuff to people and then something happens and then right. they're they like, Why? I thought you was gonna drop it. you like, right. I'm going on this tour. Like it's not because I wasn't working on, like things just happen and they flow the way no. they flow, you know? So the timing know. was right. This is gonna be such a great interview. I'm so excited um, and just oh, happy to have you on here. And maybe you can come on again. We'll we'll do it again for sure. Please, please, like in the next couple months when you want to like do a new cycle, you can call me, girl. Call yes. me. I would be yes. here. And call and me if you ever you doing any more tour. You we going to another continent. I'll be like, where girl, we going this time? So call me. You know you on my speed down now. Yeah. Already know you on my speed down. You're in my yes. pocket, girl. Yeah, well, I love you so much. Yes, I wish you all the best. Everyone, you guys, yes. make sure you like so you guys, thank you for watching. To stay con, she's the best. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us one more time your social media. Yes, everybody, please come follow me at Kira Divine D I V I N E. Kira is K I R A. So come on over, Kira Divine. I'm on Twitter at Kira Divine Says, Facebook at Kira Divine Music. I'm on TikTok too at Kira Divine. So you can come over to TikTok if you want to see me dance a little bit <laughs> and look out for the um, My Season Challenge coming out soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. Stay calm. All the best until we meet again, my sis. Mwah, cheers. I'll be, cheers. I'll be sipping this good bush tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sip, sip, sip. Okay, I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye.